Hide all the insecurities! Welcome, 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 welcome! Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve! Hello, everybody! Hello, everybody! Hello, everybody! Hello, everybody! About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that, too. Pork broccoli. Snowflake! Hail Baphomet! Thank you guys for listening. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Hello! Thank you for listening to the Jimmy Curve. Welcome, 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 everybody. My name is Jimmy Putnam. I am your host. With me, as always, are my inferiors, co-host Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody! And sidekick Will Doherty. I was 35 minutes late today. Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> Five hours ago, we were messaging on Facebook. We were talking about the show. In fact, we were specifically talking about what we were going to do on this very show. And then it came time to show up to do the show. You were nowhere to be found. When I called you and said, hey, Will, where are you? Your response was? <laughs> my uh, my response was, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot that was a thing we were doing. <laughs> How I does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dumb guy. Have oh you not? God. We discussed this. This is the literally like the first episode we had. I had to explain to you that I am tumbling down the far side of the Jimmy curve. You <laughs> makes me mad. <laughs> I interrupted that one. One, <laughs> one time I was supposed to pick up Will, and I had just talked to him. I don't know, maybe a half hour before I went to go pick him up, and he was texting me back. Right. <laughs> right. So and then I went, to, I, I knew where his apartment was because I picked him up before, but I'd never been inside his apartment. So I didn't know what apartment it was. Well, he wasn't an answer in his phones, his texts or anything. I was sitting outside his place like, what the fuck? Not, I don't know how many. I called you like seven times or whatever. And so I was just like, fuck it. And then I left. He just fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Within a half hour. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to be there in a half hour to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? You 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 were commenting the other day that it was like I don't know how you've allowed yourself. And our guest this <laughs> week, our extra special guest this week, our our guest especial, uh, está muy caliente. He is all the way from Omaha, Nebraska, comedian John Dahlgren. Yay. Yeah, you're too kind. Hey, yeah, yeah. You're too kind. Was that too rude, Will? No. Good. Uh, John, how you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you guys doing? Great. Today? What is your opinion on Will's lateness? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't shock me at all. <laughs> John, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. I'm happy Glad to have to you here. here. Uh, John, you do stand-up comedy uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. You run a show called the 140 Character Assassination Show. You were kind enough to let me do it. I was fucking terrified because i had ne the the theme of the show is short jokes like it's basically twitter jokes right yes that's the idea yes i wanted to see how uh good people were with uh short jokes because a lot of people do story jokes around the scene and i just wanted to it's see one of the, it's, how yeah it's one of the things you know it's one of the things when i started doing comedy like the first like my the the thing that i thought was going to work before i'd ever tried it was well, I tell these stories and my friends laugh while I'm doing it. I'll just do that on stage. And like very quickly, like Zach Reiner, <laughs> I think, was the one who pulled me aside and was like, write jokes. Once you learn how to write jokes, you work those into stories and make them funny. But like writing jokes is where it kind of begins. And so I, I was very happy you, you uh, let me do one of those shows. I was terrified, but everyone God, was, is terrified. It was awesome. Everyone is terrified of that show, and everyone does well, and I don't understand. When well, you asked me to do it, you were just like, hey, are you free to do a show this night? And I was just like, yeah, sure, that'd be great, thinking I'll just do my set. And then you're like, all right, well, the jokes need to be less than 30 <laughs> seconds. You need to have this many jokes. And I didn't know what it was, so I was just kind of like... Yeah, I need Fuck to get this guy. better at it. <laughs> and then, and then, and then I was just like, "Oh man, I don't really do that. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a one-liner comic." And you're just like, "Yeah, everyone says that. You know, <laughs> you'll be fine." And I was just like, "Fuck this guy." I was, I was just kind of like, "I'm not a one-liner comic. I did it. I fucking loved it." 
I, I loved I had it a, too. I had a blast, and I didn't really know where, it, like, how I was gonna do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I wrote too much because yeah. who who do we have here? And he was like, uh, he's like, yeah, whatever you have, double it because I didn't have enough material. I think well, Cowsguard maybe. Yeah, Cowsguard because I didn't have. I had too much. I, I was going through, and it it was one of those shows where I felt like I was up there. You know, for three seconds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Time went by so fast. I don't know why. That comes from the anxiety, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things I discovered about it was when you write a bunch of short jokes, if a couple of them don't work, you're past them. Like, it's it's gone. Immediately, yeah. And you're on to something else, and no one remembers the one. Like, if if a third of your jokes kind of work, that's plenty. Like, yeah. Because you're still getting to one every minute. And it forced me to like be creative. Like I got stuff out of that that I still use in my set because it forces you to be creative in a way that you don't often think about, but really is just the 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 root of comedy, like writing jokes. And I I think I'm pretty clever on Twitter, but I have like um, you know less than 200 followers, so it was kind of cool to go up there. I did some Twitter jokes. I actually did yeah. like hashtag <laughs> jokes and stuff. That yeah, I yeah. like. And I just I, eclipsed 100 followers, and I run the Twitter show. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It pisses me off. <laughs> and the other thing too is, it's at a, uh, or it has been at a place called the Down Under. Is it? Is that where it's still? It's going to yeah. stay. When you go to the Down Under on the outside, it seems super sketchy. It's you know, very sketchy on the outside. But it was awesome. Like that is you, my that is my favorite thing. Am I still muted over here? No, you're on. Oh, okay. That is my favorite thing about that bar, is that it's right. so, like, it's a real dank hole, which is exactly what I want. I want to have no windows, no access to the outside world. I just want right. drinking underground. <laughs> well, and, like... It's they, Rose Tavern underground. <laughs> yeah. And, but they, like, they hire good bartenders, and it's yeah. a super comfortable room. I don't know, man. I had a great time. I loved that show. That was one of my favorite shows i've done yeah so. it, it looks like a boat like you're supposed to be in like the hall of a boat yeah <laughs> doesn't right. it and it's Sorry. weird because uh at that place i've never had a manager be so helpful in my life like the, oh, the yeah? bar owner manager oh that, that helps so much to do a show if, yeah. the, if the, the joint is supportive he puts ads in the reader for it the oh Omaha that's awesome reader. and i'm like okay i don't know anybody who reads that first of all but that's good <laughs> Oh, that's, you know, it's funny that you say that because, like, that is one of the number one complaints that people have running shows, particularly in Lincoln, is not getting support from the venue. Yeah. I mean, I've never run a show here, but, like, Josh, you've had that happen, mm -hmm. right? That's happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they, 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 what it is is they're just like, yeah, com people will come see comedy or they'll promise like we'll advertise or we'll do this we'll we'll dedicate part of the advertising budget to it and they'll promise all these things that they just never did and just wanted you to do comedy and expect people to just come right and i think with this guy is like he's actually a new bar owner so he knows that he has to get his name out that, has that bar not been there that long uh i think it's been there but he's just like a new owner he took over yeah right. Cool. Yeah, so it's an awesome show. Everybody go check out the 140 character assassination show. What else? Uh, what, is that the only show you're hosting? That is the only show that I host. Three of the four of us here were just on a show called the Fantasy Nerd Roast. Uh, we, we talked about it on the show last week, but since that time we have performed and like that show went so well. That show went way better than it had yeah. any right to go. No but, PA. No PA, no no air conditioning. Yeah. Uh, small room. Like, Lights on with the... You could see everybody. It was very... It was like all of the things that would work against the comedy show were kind of working against that show. Add on top of it, there were 16 performers and then they gave us an hour, which breaks down to like... Three and a half minutes each. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 30 seconds before that show started, we were all standing around looking at each other going like, oh my God, this is going to be a fucking disaster. And then 30 seconds after that show ended, there was like 16 people who were like, wow, that was kind of awesome. It was great. Uh, Will, you played the penguin. It John, was great. You were the punisher. And I was uh, Agent Phil Coulson. Yeah. Will, what do you think? How'd you feel about it? Uh, I mean, basically what you said, like, 
it went super well. And it it also made me wish, like, if we could have done it right, it would have been fucking amazing. See, yeah. I, I kind of had this theory, though, which is that I think that one of the things that happened was we, we ended up with way less time than we thought we were going to have or that anyone expected. So 15 minutes before the show started, everybody pulled out their sets and just started slashing jokes. And I think it ended up working in our favor. Because yeah. everybody kind of did their five or six best jokes that they had written. So it was kind of a show of highlights. You know, on roasts, they talk about, like, if you watch a Comedy Central roast, they talk about how, like, each of those people is up there for half an hour. And then they edit those down to seven minutes or six minutes or something. And, like, imagine sitting through the other 20 minutes of stuff that doesn't work. Like, it's oh got to be, gosh. it's oh got to be gosh. exhausting. So it's kind of exhausting when we were doing it with the regular format at the other shows. Yeah. So I thought it was since we had less time, we had to be on and off. We pushed people from not saying fluff. Right. Exactly. And I, I, I kind of think that worked in our favor. Either way, it was awesome. I had a great time. We're going to do it on, in Des Moines on Saturday again. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be there. It's going to be super fun. I, It's at... Uh, the basement at Des Moines Social Club. Now I don't know anything about. Have you been there before? Uh, I went. I went to another place. I went to the House of Bricks, so I haven't been there yet. I I, I was at some place that was like a coffee shop slash comic book shop for something last year, but I don't know. I don't remember where I was. I'm bad. <laughs> I'm not good. Hey, so uh, if you want to come see us, wander around Des Moines until you find us. <laughs> yeah, I guess is my advice. Joshua, had you been on the Fantasy Nerd Roast, which comic book character would you have played? Oh my god, I have no idea. DC or Marvel? Um, and 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 get get super deep. I want a deep cut. What? I don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I was gonna say, Jimmy. I mean, like, oh yeah, limit him to DC or Marvel because Josh was gonna pull out a super deep image comics cut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't. Oh, I'd be. Uh, Actually, I want to. I don't know if it's DC or Marvel or whatever, but I would be the comedian from. from oh Watchmen. yeah, officially yeah. DC. Okay, DC. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. From a uh, Watchmen. Sure, I something from Watchmen. I'd be the. I'd be the comedian. I that think. works. That works good. I yeah. Was, I like cigars and yeah yeah nihilism. Yeah, <laughs> hurting people. Sure. In my mind. <laughs> Assassinating JFK. <laughs> well, I would say I'd be the doctor, or whatever, but I. Uh, He's got Dr. They, Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan, because I don't know if they'd appreciate me taking off my clothes and painting myself blue and waving my dick around, you know? Yeah, like, you're laying around? Yeah. <laughs> hey. I like to. Dr. Manhattan never waves, he lets it hang, <laughs> hang. with dignity. Yeah. I like to. I like John. John played the Punisher, and John's. John's uh, costume is a t-shirt yeah. with a skull on it. Just the Punisher t-shirt. <laughs> I got offered a trench coat, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to wear your trench coat. <laughs> was it Sean's? Yeah. <laughs> Sean Flaherty? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the inside of Sean Flaherty's trench coat seems sketchy to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he's a good kid. Uh, I, I asked John... Uh, you know, when we were coming on the show, I kind of send everybody uh, a Facebook message and I'm like, Hey, ready to do the show tomorrow? Uh, let me know if there's anything you really want to talk about. And John sent back, yeah, uh, a topic I thought we could discuss was late night drunk foods. And I was like, yes, that is my favorite subject to talk about. Because a lot of times I go to open mics just so I can go out and, and drunkenly eat food afterwards. Yeah. So let, <laughs> so let me ask you, John. Favorite late night drunk foods? Truck stop breakfast. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. A big omelet. Yeah. Big omelet with some hash browns. Ideally, some cheese on the hash browns. Biscuits and gravy. Oh, <sighs> biscuits and gravy. Hell yeah. So, so right. delicious. There's a there's a place called the Highway Diner just right around the corner, from, or not too far from here, that like I go all the damn time, and it is amazing. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. It is the quintessential 4 a.m. Lincoln food. Oh, I mean, I it's say. just, it's Greasy Spoon. Uh, everything on their menu is great. I always get a Euro after Duffy's just because yeah. super salty meat, you know, and a little sauce. Yeah. Like, it's all you need. When, back in college, I got real drunk 
uh, with a buddy of mine, and we went to uh, the Highway Diner, and then we tried to chug syrup. <laughs> <laughs> like Super Troopers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That movie was pretty popular. Though, yeah. So. <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's the most you've ever chugged of a substance, John? Oh, man. <laughs> I probably chug a whole beer, I guess. I Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Slow down there, cowboy. I, it, 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 there was a weird like, question. What did you think he was going to answer? It was a know. totally unfair question. John, what's the most you've ever chugged? It was, oh, my God. Like I drank a whole <laughs> bottle of Pepto-Bismol because my stomach hurt. Better story. Oh, that's crazy. That's a <laughs> lot of Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be bad for your kidney, I think. Yeah, I didn't no? do that. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was uh, strawberry milk. <laughs> That's that- basically the same as Pepto Bismol. Oh, yeah, it's just a it'll, basic. It'll turn your poop black after a while. No, well, I mean that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess is that what Pepto Bismol does? <laughs> yeah. What? I feel like I've drank a lot of Pepto Bismol. I'm unfamiliar with this. I didn't know it turned your, your movements into tar. Yeah. It was it uh, radishes? No. What? The, there's some sort of vegetable beets. You eat beets, yeah. I think. I think that turns your shit a weird color, I think. Blueberries do too. Turn your shit black. Your Prob- movements into now, tar. This, now how this do probably we, won't be on the How show. do we turn it a nice, pleasant fuchsia? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what combination I'm of go- like... I'm Googling uh, it right a, now. A greater question is how do I segue into another segment? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get the, the Lowe's paint mixer before you right. get a nice fuchsia lavender, mm. maybe. You know, somewhere at some college, there is a science department that is studying precisely this and how and why it happens. Yeah. For sure, someone is studying this. Yep, someone's getting so paid. So what, what you're trying to say is, thank God someone's out there doing science that actually matters to our lives. Exactly, right. exactly. Like, someone is making a positive impact on the world. They're going to hear this, and they're going to go, finally, someone cares. Guess what? I don't have cancer, but I got to poop. <laughs> hey, look, everybody. Dahlgren's having a conversation about poop again. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. Weird how that keeps happening. Yeah. Um, it's going to happen again. So uh, by way of transitioning out of this discussion and into something else, here we go. Anything else. <laughs> here really? we go. So uh, what we need to do right now is do our draft for the impression contest. So Joshua had the idea that we were going to do uh, an impression competition where we are going to ask listeners to suggest uh celebrities for us to impersonate we did that uh we got a big long list i mean we've got i don't know what how many 35 names on here or something and uh i figured we'd each pick five so we're going to each go around and we're going to each pick five names we're going to give ourselves a week to prepare next week on the show we are going to attempt to impersonate five different people each sound good guys Yes. Uh, and after each draft pick, John is going to grade us on our pick. Oh, right then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to get you involved. <laughs> Whatever you want. So, Will, you have first pick. You're on the clock. Okay. Um. A- as the Minnesota Timberwolves, you finished with the worst record in the league <laughs> and now have first pick. <laughs> yeah, but that's how you get Kevin Garnett. See, I can make sports references, Jimmy. More recently, Andrew Wiggins, but that's okay. We're all proud. I, of yeah, you. I have no idea who that was. <laughs> right. I, I, for for the number one draft pick, mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Russell Brand eating a veggie omelet. Awesome. That uh, that that one was on my list. I liked that one okay. a lot. Well, I just my uh, my my dear wife Serenity uh, has apparently recently been getting real into Russell Brand. Uh, okay. So He's I've a decided. Great person. Is he? Yeah. I don't know any, like, I've seen some of his stand-up and it's okay. Apparently she doesn't care about his comedy. She's just, like, watching his YouTube videos. Right. I'm going to pick Shaquille O'Neal. It's it's pretty easy. I guess that's a good first pick. Then. Well, I'm shitty at impressions, so I'm, like, grabbing the low-hanging <laughs> fruit. Like, if, 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 if Owen Wilson had been on here, I would have picked Owen Wilson. But yeah. I thought that would have been too easy, so I, I need low-hanging fruit. You just look up Aries Spears on YouTube. <laughs> right, right. So right. you're giving him a C then? Yeah. And Will got a... <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't get graded on my yeah, draft choice. You get it. You get an A. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with uh, f- my first pick, Ed Wynn. 
I don't know who Ed Wynn is. Neither did Josh and I. We had to look it up. Have you seen Wreck-It Ralph? I have not. Okay, Ed Wynn. Have you seen Have you seen Alice in Wonderland? The like the new animated Tim. No. Oh, the, the old, old animated. animated one. Yeah. Mad Hatter. He's the Mad Hatter. Oh, okay. So All since right, yeah. since this is Josh's pick, I'll try and attempt an Ed Wynn. Right. He's the guy who thought of talks like this. Okay. Yeah, I know yeah. who you're talking right. about. Okay. Cool. So cool. we're 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 sticking with the low hanging fruit. <laughs> right. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be that's a challenge. I would think. Well, we need to Maybe get your I'll grade from Big Daddy Dahlgren. That's a that's a D for me. No, nah. nah. <laughs> fuck you. I, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> you don't know the Mad Hatter from the like classic I, Disney? Well, you should have put Mad Hatter then. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair enough. Anyways, Will, you're on the okay, clock. I'm up. I'm up. You know what? I I didn't really have a plan here. I'm just want to stick to a theme. Since my first one was Russell Brand eating a veggie omelet, I'm going to go with David Crosby eating a McRib sandwich. <laughs> Just because it's the only other one that's like a guy yeah, yeah. eating a food. I uh, I, I, like I don't that think pick. the McRib is in season. Ooh, <laughs> could work against you. <laughs> I like that. I'll give that a B, even though I don't know what David Crosby sounds like. Yeah. he's a I'm really focusing on the McRib in this impression. <laughs> right. It's going to be... It, it's. It may sound like David Crosby, but it's 100% going to sound like what a McRib. <laughs> what it sound sounds like. like to eat a McRib. I am going to pick Jeffrey Graman's neighbor, Vince. Dude. Wh- what? <laughs> F? <laughs> my my friend Jeff Graman responded with my neighbor, Vince. So I'm going to try and do that. I feel well, like you should he- look up his YouTube videos, too. I don't know. I, he may not even be a real person, but, <laughs> but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do what I believe to be an imp- the closest impression of him I can. Do a, an impression of Vince McMahon instead. I feel like you guys are <laughs> taking this serious. I am taking this as seriously as I intend to take it. <laughs> yeah, Josh, you're on the clock. All right, I'm gonna go with Jigsaw from the Ooh, Saw movies. Okay, I'll give that a B. Thank I like you. that. I like that. Thank you. Uh, the actor's name is Tobin Bell. I don't know why. I give that a D. <laughs> <laughs> Will, you're on the clock. Uh, uh, clarification question. Yes. Falco mm-hmm. can't possibly be the member of Nintendo's Star Fox team, right? No. I don't know what the other Falco is. Uh, so saying Amadeus. Rock me Amadeus, also Der Commissaire. Oh. He's German. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That sounds hard. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Paul Giamatti. Nice. Because nice. I feel like that just fits in my emotional <clears throat> wheelhouse. Okay. Wow. That's You're, a good that's one. You're going to play him as Pig Vomit from <laughs> Private Parts? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Nope. I'm, uh... I give that an A. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm staring long and hard at uh, Seth Rogen once again because I feel like it'd be low-hanging fruit. I feel like that's one I might actually be able to do. But I'm going a different direction. Kathy Griffin. Wow. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Ooh. I'll give that an A+. Plus. Thank you, yeah. Going uh, for it. That's hard. Well, I, 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 I picked a goofball one last time, so I really, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to try this. Are you also going to take off your pants in front of Anderson Cooper? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if given uh, the opportunity, any of us would. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to tell you guys, our guest next week is Anderson Cooper. Joshua. I'm going to go with Clint Eastwood. Nice. All right. Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that an A. Good. 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 Wow. I, I, I thought long and hard about Clint Eastwood, too, just because my all-time favorite movie is Unforgiven. What pick are we I'm on? I'm glad you're on. Uh, Will. I'm on. I think I'm making my fourth pick. Right? I have three. Yeah, so this will be my fourth. Yeah, I'm starting coming. round four. I'm really, I'm really taking a long, hard look at John Oliver. Nice. But I'm not sure if that's too... I'm not sure, like, if I'm going to do two British guys, is that too? Because I've already got Russell Brand. Well, the, the, so the, the, uh, the challenge in that is making them distinct from can each other. I, um, can I do two different distinct British accents? Right. That sounds, you know what? That they sounds are, like a challenge. I, I like it. I'm going to do it. I they're, like it a lot. They're kind of different too. Like, they uh, are. um, Russell Brand's very kind of, uh. Well, he's a commoner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John Oliver obviously resides in the House of Lords. Morgan Freeman. Ooh. 
I think you can do that too easily. Okay. I'm gonna give that Whoa. a B minus. Whoa! All right, all right. Oh, all I right. didn't get I didn't get a grade for John. You said Oliver. you said John Oliver. It's good. What? Wow. I'll give that an A. Nice, nice. Degree of difficulty. Yeah. You just don't hear anybody doing that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I am gonna go with Jeff Bridges. Nice. Nice. You're not going to do the big Lebowski the entire time, are you? I'm going to try not to. Yeah. I uh, kind of like him in Iron Man. Maybe I'll do a Jeff Bridges Nice. Iron Man. Ooh, Because yeah. he's almost like an older Owen Wilson voice. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. If you think about, think about it. That? I like that. Give that an A+. What was his character <laughs> name? It's like o- Obadiah Stain. Is that right? Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. I like it. Uh, Will, you're up. There's three right in a row that I'm I'm kind of flipping between. Go ahead and just and lay it out. Let us sit on it. Ice Cube, Ice T, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. I've I really I need I think I need a little racial diversity in my cast. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure the best way to go with that. Um, let John pick one for you. I don't Ooh, know. Let's just let John pick one for each of us now. Oh, that for the for round five. That makes sense. Who is Bobby Christina? <laughs> That's uh. Bobby, I didn't know that, who that was when Bobby I Bobby put... Brown and Whitney Houston's daughter that got in that drug overdose and is in a coma in the hospital. Oh, that's a real easy impression. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Beep. Yeah. Beep. Uh, <laughs> I think Will should do Vin Diesel. Awesome. Uh, Will's doing Vin? Yeah. I will have Jimmy do Michael Keaton. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> that's going to be tough, but oh. I'm in. I like it. And... Joshua will do Larry King. Thank you. He's on my list. <laughs> oh, so I was gonna nice, pick. nice. Just don't do Norm Macdonald during doing Larry King. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so to recap, I have got uh, Shaquille O'Neal, Kathy Griffin, Jeff's neighbor Vince, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Keaton, and Morgan Freeman. It's a good list. Joshua, what do you got? I have Clint Eastwood, Jigsaw, Ed Wynn, Jeff Bridges and Larry King. Nice. Are you happy with your list? Yes, I'm very happy with my list. Will, what do you got? In a pen? I have, yeah, I didn't write it down. Uh, I have Vin Diesel, Russell Brand eating a veggie omelet, <laughs> David Crosby eating a McRib sandwich, <laughs> uh, John Oliver, and. Paul Giamatti. Nice, nice. nice. I okay. knew I was forgetting someone, and that's hey. the person it should be. All right. Well, tune in next week, ladies and gentlemen of the Jimmy Curve, to hear the results of our impression contest. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm so excited. I, I know. Like I was, <laughs> I handed out these lists before we got here, and and. Josh went through his like he was going through a fantasy football draft se- sheet. <laughs> I mean, you were like super intent on it, like yeah. More so than I've ever seen you with anything we've done on this show. But it's going to be fun, man. It's I gonna be a blast. I am going to be terrible at all of these. How do you do a Michael Keaton? Ooh, can I do Johnny Dangerously? Do you guys know Johnny Dangerously? Yeah. yeah. I, I was thinking. Isn't that just Bruce Wayne, though? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, Beetlejuice. I could do Batman. Yeah, he, him is Batman. Michael Keaton is one of the most underrated actors of our time. He's been great in so many things and, like, never been in anything that's super, super terrible. Or not too many things. That'll be fun. All right. Uh, Multiplicity? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't recall that one. I know I've seen it. I know Where what it gets, is. like, cloned a bunch or yeah. whatever. Is it not good? Eh. All right. Well, I, you know. So I will be doing Michael Keaton for Multiplicity. Ooh. That's just you talking in your normal voice, but like re-echoing it and reverbing it so it sounds like there's six of you. Yeah, hold on. Do it right now. <laughs> check, check. Michael, Michael Keaton in multiplicity. multiplicity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of that. Enough Enough fun. <laughs> enough fun. God Let's move damn. on to some other stuff. Uh, so uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was in the span of three days, my wife and I got into two car accidents which is crazy like i haven't been in a car accident in years years and years and years neither one was our fault <laughs> and it's funny as i was i was texting i texted uh john earlier today that i was going to talk about this on the show and his response was what was it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> lincoln drivers lincoln drivers <laughs> now and i was like fuck yeah because 
people are terrible at driving in this town. Like, terrible. Oh, Will shrugged and... Doesn't everybody think that about wherever they are all the time? Pretty much. Maybe, but I've lived in three towns as an adult, and this is by far the worst. Like, what, what, the tr- are, what are the three towns? Uh, Lawrence, Kansas, and Omaha, and then Lincoln. Hmm. And the driving in Lincoln is... And I've also been around Kansas City a lot, so like I count that as a town I'm familiar with the driving of. But like the driving in Lincoln is significantly worse consistently and like but this is what's funny about it it airs on the side of caution to the extent that it's just s- like stupidity yeah okay so the first wreck that i that i got in was 7 30 a.m on thursday i was driving down 14th street at 14th and b a car crossing the 14th blew through a yield sign and i so i t-boned it like i had slammed into the side of the car like i Slammed on my brakes and skidded into the side of the car, you know, because he didn't, he didn't stop or slow down. He just drove right through the yield sign. Uh, we call the cops, cops, you know, I call the insurance company and which follows the most awkward 12 minutes in the world, which is where we're waiting for the police to show up. And this guy's trying to like, can trying to get me to let him leave. And I got to. Te- keep telling him no man you got to stay here because i know what he wants he keeps because he's shuffling his feet and he's like ah oh, i gotta get to work man i gotta get to work i'm gonna be late to work like i gotta go i don't even see any damage on the car man and i'm like the entire front end of my car is fucking totaled like the it's completely and he's like we exchange insurance information man isn't that all we need to do and i'm like fuck no because if we don't get a police report I can't prove that this was your fault (laughs) and then I'm going to have to pay a $500 deductible and I can't have that happen. I'm also aware that this is probably going to ruin this dude's year. Like this is probably, you know, he's going to, this is going to be a lot of trouble for him, but I I don't know. I, I, I didn't know what to do, but cops show up, takes our statements. We do accident report and this guy gets a ticket for failure to yield. And this is what I wanted to ask about. I get home, whatever, I file an insurance claim, we report the whole thing, and then I hear back from my insurance agent that that the 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 other the guy that I hit has also filed an insurance claim on my insurance claiming that the accident was my fault. And they're doing an investigation and I'm waiting to hear back right now. Like I haven't heard back. So because he got a ticket, I'm thinking it's gonna be pretty cut and dry. Yeah. You know? But here, here's what here's what occurred to me. At first, I was pissed off that he would lie about that shit and claim that the accident was my fault. But then I realized our legal system turns people into liars because there's no penalty for him doing that. Yeah. Like, if he lies and says the accident was my fault, the best thing that could happen is that the claim gets that they decide in his favor and it gets filed on my insurance. The worst thing that can happen is the exact same thing as if he had just admitted the truth right away, which is he pays a deductible and is responsible and his insurance rate goes way up. There's no penalty for him, like, trying to scam me out of money. That's infuriating, right? Like, there should be some sort of penalty built in. I don't know. I mean, I feel like you could get burned the other way, though, if you were on the other end of that. How so? Like... Let's let's say you're in his position. Right. He's obviously desperate to get out of the situation. Right. And right. he sees that as like his only avenue to n- beyond cuz saying I'm guilty, I have to pay, not doing anything, I have to pay. I got to do something to like he's, he's Hail Mary pass. Right, exactly. He, he he's not really doesn't really have a say anyways. Even if he thought it wasn't his fault. And he's saying it's not his fault. It, it, he doesn't determine whose fault it is, anyways. The insurance company does. Right, right. But he can. But but they won't. They they will. The insurance company only they, does that. They might have done it on his behalf. If there's a dispute, if there's not a dispute, right? Then but he doesn't do that, right? The insurance company will. Well, he he can say right away this was my fault, and then they won't dispute it. This is more a moral question. That, this, this is what's crazy, because of our system, that sounds so weird, right? Like, you're like, who would do that? Well, I would. I yeah, would. I would, too. I would counter if 
Could, if there's a that's what I'm saying, who would, who would chance, call your insurance and, and, and company and admit fault? No one would do that. I wouldn't yeah. feel guilty at all because by then I would already convince myself that it wasn't my fault. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally no. That's just what I was gonna say. Like I don't know on a moral ground. I don't know whether that makes it better or worse for you. But my suspicion is that that guy probably is just like that fucking guy hit me. Like, right. He blew through the yield. It was right. totally his fault, right. but on his, but he's still the person who was in the car that got hit by another car. So I assume no matter what the circumstance was, that guy thinks he's right. Well, so this is what was funny. As we were waiting for the police, he kept saying a bunch of stuff that had no bearing on what had happened. But it was like he was trying to convince me of these details that somehow in, in his mind, this whole, I think the guy was probably stoned out of his mind. That's one thing. Like, I think he was probably super high. He just, I don't have anything to base that on. He just seems like a guy who would be high on his way to work at seven in the morning. Like, he was, he was real <laughs> young and he seemed real stupid. And, you know, the name on the insurance card that he, he gave me too is also not his name and not the same last name either. So he was driving someone else's car, but he kept looking at his car and he kept going like, I don't see any damage on my car, man. I don't see any damage here. As though I was going to go, oh, well, then let's just go our separate yeah, ways. Yeah, he just wanted to get away. And, like, it didn't occur to me at the time, but I'm starting to think now, after you guys just said that, that from the very get-go, he thought that he w that it was my fault. Yeah. It never even in a million years occurred to me that he could have that point of view because it so obviously wasn't. Because he <laughs> committed a crime and got a ticket for committing said crime, which caused the accident. Yeah. But he, and then he, and then he go, and then he kept saying, he kept saying, I tried to, I tried to get out of the way, man. You saw me turn. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't avoid you. You saw me turn out of the way. And I was just thinking like, so fucking what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, why are you telling me that? And then he was looking yeah. at his car and he was like, this isn't the damage, man. This is already here. Cause I just, I, I, this damage was caused when I hit my house the other day is another thing he said. <laughs> it's like, there was a fucking, there was a fucking huge dent with all the paint scratched off, like right about <laughs> where I hit his car. It's all falling into place as I'm having this conversation. He thought from the very get go that the accident was totally my fault and he was trying to do me a solid, I think. Probably. Which is insane be based on what happened. But I think that's it's a little bit thought. of both. Yeah. I think also he was just fucking high and panicked. Yeah. So there was like a lot of adrenaline and it, sometimes when your adrenaline kicks in, you start focusing on weird details yeah. and like you can't think of big picture stuff. So he was just looking at the side of his car like, there's no damage here. I don't see any damage. I don't see where it hit. I don't see where it hit. What was the second accident? Uh, well, the second accident, I was actually not there. It was my wife was driving our pickup truck and was stopped at a red light. And the car behind her... Okay, so ironically, the, the first accident, I was driving my Kia Spectra. The second accident, my wife was driving our Chevrolet Silverado and was slammed into from behind by a Kia Spectra, which was in turn slammed into from behind by another pickup truck. So a pickup truck just smashed into this Kia and then bumped it into our truck. Now, this was the total reversal. There was zero damage on my truck from this accident. Like, it, was, it wasn't hit hard, and the Kia was pretty fucked up, but, like, it just ran into sort of the trailer hitch on my truck, which is just this big hunk of steel. So, like... If there was a scratch on that, whatever, you know? So then your wife jumped out of the truck and just looked at it and started going like, I don't see any damage on my... I, just, I think it's fine. I, I gotta get to work. <laughs> uh, humorously enough, here is what happened. This was Saturday, and Saturday is was the day of the fantasy nerd roast. So we were getting ready to go. And she was on her way home with our lunch, and she was speaking to me on the phone at the time over Bluetooth. So, and at the Ooh. time that she got, yeah, I know. Oh, look who's got a Bluetooth at the time. I got oh, hit. no. So, oh, no. Look who's talking on the phone when they should be paying attention <laughs> to the road. Correct. But <laughs> in her defense, she was stopped at a red light. So, uh, so, but this is what I, and she's, she'd called me to say, I'm almost home. I've got lunch. And then she got hit mid conversation. So what I heard was, I'm on my way home with lunch. It's going to be pretty great. Who's the best wife? Oh my god, I just got hit! And uh and I was like, 
what, what, what? And, and, and she goes, I gotta go and hung up. And I was like, what the fuck happened? And I was kind of panicked and it's my wife. And I'm like, I gotta go get her. So I jumped in the busted ass Kia and went and found her mostly just so I could eat my Jimmy John sandwich. <laughs> I was gonna say, what, what, what? I need to know what else you got for lunch. <laughs> cause, cause I, I want my Italian BMT. Cause she had to wait for the police because she was the one who called the police. Uh, for that accident. Narcs, man. <laughs> what, what, what? You gotta do it, dude. You gotta do it or else you're liable. Gotta prove you're not liable. That one, she probably could have not bothered because there was no... Di- I mean, our, we could have just driven away. No, and you, you're been. right. You are liable. But you're liable to get stabbed if you keep narking. <laughs> <laughs> Will's got jokes. Will's- <laughs> Snitches get stitches. Have I, got, have I got that somewhere? Hold on. Let me see if I've got that. No, I don't even think I have that one loaded in there. <laughs> it's okay. I just yell it now. What universe are you in where you just get into Rex and then, meh, drive away? If both the cars are real pieces of shit, they just don't care. <laughs> I've When it's in, their fault. I've never <laughs> yeah, when it's their fault. But there has to be some way of determining liability. Like, who is at fault? Right. And if, um, and, and if you don't assure the insurance, because police don't you can do get that. an adjuster police, right away. I think police don't actually determine who was at fault. No, but they will they, give one person a ticket they if can. they right. But that's a Lincoln thing too. Like in Lincoln, it's a policy. Their police department requires if there's an accident and somebody violated the law, they get a ticket. Good. So where I came from, um, you know, it's discretionary. So you know, um. You know, because but that doesn't mean they're determining fault. It just means somebody broke the law, right? And then the the assurance uh, adjusters or whatever or investigators, those are the ones that determine who was at fault, and they go back and forth between the two insurance companies, and usually come to some sort of agreement or settlement. Um, you know, that's who determines. It's the insurance companies. That's why you file a claim, you which always, is which you, is nuts. You always file a claim because you know. They probably you have might, like an arbitrator in between. You might get, get lucky, that. you yeah. know. <laughs> right, right. And by lucky, you mean horribly screw somebody over. <laughs> sure, fuck it, whatever. Oh, uh, see, I can't. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I'm not like a good person, but I couldn't sleep at night if I did that. Like, I have to say what happened. If a thing is my fault, I have to admit it. And I think if you like, if you work for a place where you drive a lot. Like your driving record's pretty important. Yeah. You always file a claim because you know, you you don't want you don't want to be admitting that you you did something wrong and I have a hard time accepting nefarious gains. This is a weird hypothetical, but I think there was a movie that came out uh, a couple years ago that was all like premised on the idea that like somebody shows up to your house with like a red button. It's yeah. Like if you the push box. the button, is that what the movie is called? I yeah. haven't actually seen it. I'm just it's, remembering. It's based that. on a classic science fiction short story. Okay. Well, yeah, and it's, I haven't seen the movie, but I know the short story. Pre- if, if, it's, if you press the button, you get a million dollars, and someone you've never met dies. Right. My only question, when put in that scenario, is how many times can I press <laughs> that button? Right. <laughs> and that's not just me being a sociopath, but like that's more efficient. Well, the, if the you're trading a million dollars for one life, you but, could save a lot of lives. But but the catch is. It's the previous person who pushed the button who dies. I see. So then he goes to the next person, and if they push the button, you die. That's the catch. Okay. That they don't you tell can't you about. Hit that's, it a bunch of times. Right. That's the sci-fi premise. Is because like, as soon as you hit the button, you die because you were the previous <laughs> person to hit it. It just kicks back. Well, ideally, ideally, like and then they- you would just start slamming the button enough times, hoping you'll eventually get to the person who delivered you the box, <laughs> <laughs> and then you just get the box. <laughs> and now you now you own the box. Have uh, you seen the Brass Teapot? There's uh, a movie called The Brass Teapot, uh-uh. and what it is is like this gal. This it's a couple, and they stop at this like antique place. Well, the gal just steals like this brass teapot right. from it. Like she takes it, and they run off. Whatever. Well, it turns out every time someone gets hurt, to cause pain, money comes out of it. <laughs> it's a weird premise. And how old is this movie? It's a few years old. It's great though. But it's a it's a modern movie. Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's in and, and you know they am you know consider like killing someone because the more you hurt someone, you know, more severe the injury, the more money that would come out of it. I'm gonna watch this movie. Yeah, the brass teapot. Nice. 
You know what's a good movie? What's that? Stuck on You. It's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Fairly Brothers? Yeah. I like it. I mean, I think we can all agree. Uh, Matt Damon's masterwork. Yeah. Uh, his seminal, his yeah. seminal opus. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's do some news. Joshua. 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 Fossler. News. Hello, everybody. I got to tell you guys, I am just exhausted from doing these news stories. Like, it takes a lot of work to be like this creative you know what i mean it's just taxing like being this funny all the time you know what i mean <laughs> obviously i do <laughs> masking a brag with a false modesty known as humble brag <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, i thought that was just it i was like that was a weird news story <laughs> <laughs> may seem like a, an effective way to boost uh, or boast about your achievements without seeming like an egotistical jerk. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Harvard Business School uh, researchers found exactly the opposite. Uh, people may be better off simply bragging and self-promoting without shame uh, than adopting um, a veneer of faux humility. Uh, even, com uh, even complainers far better uh, than humble braggers in the study because they were viewed as more sincere. Yeah, this this makes total sense to me. Yeah. Uh, so I'll skip down here. The question. So they asked three questions to like a bunch of over three hundred people, right? Uh, and uh, within an ask questions, they go. They had like people say these things to the to the people mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. the test, and it was. Uh, uh, made the following three statements. I am so bored, which is a complaint. People mistake me for a model, which is explicit bragging. And the everyone wishes they had this problem remark of, uh, I am so bored of people mistaking me for a model. <laughs> <laughs> so they found that, uh, Actually, being you know humble bragging was the worst. Out yeah, of all yeah these these uh, these uh, studies always boil these things down into like an oversimplified test. But I that one's funny. Yeah. So uh, I this one makes complete sense to me because I think that the most off-putting uh, personality trait for most people is insincerity, and I think that like. All of the other personality traits that annoy people are forms of insincerity to one form to in one version or another. And like honesty, even if you're a dick, is always going to be more it's gonna like it's one of those things of like being upfront and truthful is always going to hurt less in the long run than like Was it a study that was it was toxic internally or toxic externally? To other people well it, they then they asked the opinion of the of the people in the test like what do you think of this person you know what i mean yeah okay and, and they found you know they found humble bragging to be the least sincere that's an interesting question though like it, the other side of it is which makes the person feel more guilty because the insincerity that's toxic internally too. <laughs> right right it is <laughs> can yeah. i can i point out like this study didn't address like it, it's it's in there with like in insincerity, but it didn't address what I feel like is my personality type, which is the opposite of humble bragging, which is like I'm insincere. I'm just like faux confident and like I actually hate myself and think I'm a piece of shit, but I just walk around like fucking King Swagger cop. <laughs> like, hey guys. What's up, huh? Must be nice to get a hangout with me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I said it was toxic internally. <laughs> <laughs> See? That, though, that wasn't even represented. Yeah, but that's why that's why these tests are always insufficient to really make any kind of a point because the, that test set out to prove something. So it was designed around, like, their goal was to get this result. I bet, I, I I bet they would have found... Like their hypothesis beforehand that whiners might have been more annoying. Maybe, maybe, but the, the even braggers. But the study was called humble brag. Yeah. Something. Well, I bet that's after the fact, and that's just the article. It might have been. It yeah, might have I, been. I think it was just the article. I mean, it was scientific. I they uh you know they wanted to see like the effect on the other people 
people, people that are being talked to, yeah. you know, how do they, how do they react or how do they, how does whatever they're saying make them feel, you know? And most people like internally yeah. call people assholes in their head and they it, thought, they thought, I think they thought like just straight out bragging or complaining would have been worse. Yeah. Now. Uh, we figured out with the Pepto Bismol turns your stools black. Which one of these turns your soul, soul black? black. Ah, <laughs> I like it. Ah. <laughs> All right. <coughs> All right. You got one more? Yeah. They. Um. Wh- where do you think the number one bin- binge placing is? Like the binge state, the, the binge drinks. Wisconsin, oh, the most binge drinking state. Mm-hmm. Wisconsin. I am. What, go- what state binge uh, drinks the most? I am. Okay, we got one Wisconsin. I am going to say. Well, is it total? Is it per capita? They they actually the study was by county. Oh. So the, this this county drinks. It's yeah. probably Douglas County. <laughs> Drin- it binge drinks the most. Louisiana. Well. Any- um. I, it's got to be something unexpected. So I'm going to say Alaska. My first thought was Alaska. Oh, really? I thought yeah. it was my last. I was like, what's the weirdest one? Or well, South Dakota because of the reservations. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> hold on. I, I, have to, I have to hit it. Way to lose the brown audience. <laughs> uh, I, was thinking, I was thinking Mardi Gras. Actually, uh, uh, John, you get an A, bud. It was Wisconsin. Yeah. What? yeah, there's a county in Wisconsin. Did you know that, or is it just a good guess? I see a bunch of those uh, drinking <laughs> articles every time, and Wisconsin's always in the top five, so I just threw that in there. Nice. And always up there, Nebraska. It's always up there. <laughs> yeah, they say Midwestern states tend to binge drink a lot, but uh, Wisconsin- We don't have museums. <laughs> <laughs> The county, the county in Wisconsin is thirty. You don't like Moral Hall. Thirty-six <laughs> percent of the adults there binge drink. You know the state. That's the high one. Yeah, yeah. What do they? What do they define as binge drink? Okay, that's in here. I got to find it. Having uh, more than six drinks. Feel, yeah. uh, binge in drinking, as defined by the CDC, is alcohol consumption that brings one's BAC up to at least point zero eight in one sitting. About five or more drinks for men in two in two hours, or uh, for women, it is uh, let's see here. It's uh, four or more drinks for women. Um, in 2012, 183 percent of people in the U.S. were considered binge drinkers. Oh, and 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 this is and this isn't. There's no frequency factor. They're just saying, do you occasionally do this? Because you said 36 percent of adults. 36% of the adults in that county are, would be considered there, binge drinkers. There must be a frequency because if it was if there's no consideration for frequency, those numbers would be 100%. The, the study was figuring out that most people aren't drinking more than usual, but binge drinking with uh, women has increased pretty substantially. And so that's what the story was about. I assume I assume it's our uh, seemingly recent cultural fetish fetishization of wine is that a new is that a new thing it's not new it's just become like an internet meme more recently like it's like bacon is to men as like wine is to women on the internet really has been my i feel like i've seen that around a lot huh yeah women women love the wine you know they like the white wines it seems like you know i mean my wife probably i mean she drinks more probably because she drinks white wine she I mean, probably drinks more than she otherwise would if she didn't drink wine. Right. And there's the new uh, concoctions that people are coming out with, like the apple ciders and the mm-hmm. the Sorry. fruit mixed malt cocktails and crap like that. Yeah, uh, but I, that's not what causes binge drinking. I guess I just assume that women started drinking more once we let them go to college, you know? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here's here's the that thing. That guy isn't funny. <laughs> look, maybe maybe we just need to all collectively like take a look at ourselves, you know? Like, no, maybe, no, yeah. don't make me do that. Yeah. Maybe I agree with Will. Maybe women maybe we shouldn't blame women for binge drinking more. Maybe we're all just getting uglier. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's probably true. Well, we're definitely getting fatter. 
<laughs> you mean like as a as a male as a male population, population. in this country? In yeah. order them for them to tie one on, they got to tie one on. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I would say that there is statistical evidence to support your point. Remember, remember what movie stars used to look like? I'll tell you, Rock Hudson. Now you know what they look like now. Jack Black. Seth Rogen. <laughs> Jonah Hill. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now you do one. Uh, <laughs> did, uh, Andy Richter? I don't... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice deep no. cut. All right. A- Andy Richter wishes his career had taken off. Yeah. He should have got <laughs> The Daily Show. That would have been cool. <laughs> and on that note, let's go. Let's go drinking. Let's yeah, go out yeah. drinking. Fuck it. Hey, this has been fun. Oh, let's do... Uh, Let's do plugs. Who's got stuff coming up? Uh, I'm on uh, Doom Room, May 7th at the hideout in Omaha, Nebraska. Doom Room. Yeah, also the next Fantasy Nerd Roast in Des Moines on May on Saturday, Second. May 2nd. What, uh, what do you got coming up, John? What do I have coming up? Uh, on Thursday, April 30th, I have Agreed to Disagree. That's the day this drops. It's at the Sydney. I am arguing with Stephen Smith about farts versus baseball, and mm. I am on the side of farts. <laughs> well, obviously from earlier. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Saturday, Saturday, I'm also on the Nerd Roast. I think May 14th, I am on the D and D show. That's in that's Brenna's show, and I'm going to be yeah. playing a Bob's Burger character. And then my show is on May 15th at the Down Under Lounge, and then obviously Crom Comedy Festival is on. May 22nd to the 24th, and tickets are available for that. Jesus, man. That's it? That's all you're doing? At uh, Cro- <laughs> Crom- is there a website for that? Cromcomedy.com or something? Cromcomedyfest.com. And throw out a Twitter handle or something. Uh, Where can we learn more about John Dahlgren? My Twitter handle is at Dolph John Grin. All uh, right. Capital D, <laughs> capital J. Spelled sort of like uh, Dolph Lundgren, but instead of Lund, it's John. That's awesome. It's John. I love it. <laughs> Will, what do you got coming up? Um, this Thursday, I'm going to be on a talk about it at Knickerbockers. Fabulous. So if you're listening to this on the day it came out, go eat some tacos. They're 35 cents. And uh, see what color they turn your stools. Uh, I love that show. <laughs> uh, Joshua. Uh, at Joshua Vossler. <laughs> That's it. I, uh. You know, I've been I've, everybody's been asking me to do shows, but I can't because I have to work. Too humble bad for bragging, <laughs> humble bragging, humble yeah. bragging. Right? Too bad for Josh. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Uh, I should play the. It's your. Come see us at stuff. Do you have? Do you have one? I more? was going to retroactively plug, plug last month's Will Doherty loves company because it was so goddamn good. I'm still excited it's, about it. It was. It was great. Uh, yeah, from Saturday? Yeah. Dude, it was baller. It was a great show. So, uh, thank you guys for listening. Oh, hey, you, Will, you said you had some music for the show this week. Oh, yeah. I also do, too. Do you have that? Oh, Oh, what do you have? He's my best friend, Mark, who makes music, and it's really good. It's called, uh, Red Letter Girl by Umser Furzen. Oh, okay. Let's use, uh, that one this week, and we use yours next week? Yeah. Cool, cool, man. I'd love to put that on the show. Let's do it. This song, the song at the end of the show is, say that one more time. Red Letter Girl by Umza Furzen. Umza Furzen? Spell that. U-M-Z-U-F-U-R-Z-E-N. Oh, yeah. Phonetically. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, we're going to hear some new music then. So, for uh, Joshua Vossler. Poop's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Will Doherty. I'm late. And our extra special guest, Johnny Dahlgren. That's ejaculatastic. <laughs> <laughs> I've been your host, Jimmy Putnam. Thank you and good night. <laughs>